What about wild caught fish, shrimp, lobster, clams, oysters? In my book, Killer Fish, I addressed each and every one of those issues. Uh, no aquatic life was ever meant to be consumed. After removing it from the water within 20 minutes, the fats, saturated fats, and even the so-called omega oils, which are minimal in most of these aquatic life, uh, are oxidized. That's a lipid peroxide. For 65 years, we've known that's a known carcinogen. When you cook it, it has a, another two or three added attractions to it being dangerous for you. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we've almost fished out the oceans. And at this stage, uh, as Einstein so wisely said, once all of the fish are gone, we have five years after it. The estimated date by the experts is 2048. So, you know, we have polluted the oceans so much that um, even if you uh, would like to fish, it, it's, fish is not edible anymore. It's, um, you can forget about, and you can forget about shrimp and all the scavengers of the ocean that are full of chemicals. The, you know, in Florida here we have um, problems with um, algae growth and uh, all kinds of chemical outlets from, uh, of course, people have just poured tons of sewer stuff into the ocean. The thing is that if we stop uh, commercial fishing, we might have a chance, but we all need to support that by not eating fish, by showing that we want that to stop so that fish can regrow and the ocean can get healthy again. I, I agree. I will just come back to the thing that I said before, which is that it's dose dependent. So if we can get it down to two or three times a week, it's organic or wild caught, we will solve a lot of our problem. The other thing I'll mention, since I, so we don't just keep repeating ourselves here, is that um, uh, sometimes people are a little touchy about this being a business. But let me tell you why it's important for us to make this a business. Because from the outside looking in, we want health professionals all over the world to join in and start recommending this to their patients. And if they see us as a bunch of well-intentioned, passionate people living in our cars, it doesn't look so inviting to do this for a business. And so I've been unabashedly profitable at Wellness Forum Health because I want people to look at it and say, you know, if I decided to do, I no longer have to choose between doing the right thing and making money. I could actually do the right thing and make money, okay? I can put my kids through college. I can make my mortgage payment. I'll be able to drive an automobile, take a vacation next year. So I bristle a little bit when people think that if you talk about being successful, that's a bad thing. I think being successful is a good thing. It invites other people in to do this with their patients too. Important, important issue. Um, also, I agree with everything here, but here's a little tester. So my mom is like, oh, I'm never gonna give up fish. And my dad, they're like, you know, 20 years of me trying to get them to give up fish. And friends too, I'm like, okay go get your mercury tested, because this is very easy to do. So all of those pollutants, you, I don't think we have PCB and dioxin tests. I don't know how, how much, how uh, sophisticated our uh, medical testing is on those things, but I have, I send my parents and people and clients that have fish, even like if they can't give up sushi or whatever, a couple times a week, or even once a couple times a month or something. And you'd be shocked at how many people have elevated mercury in their blood. And that's enough to scare a lot of people. And it's, it's also says a lot about the pollutants actually getting in, in not so large of a dose. I mean, clearly we have a huge system sustainability issue at our hands. I mean, the data, every day I read a new article about it and it's terrifying because every species, we are all related and it's gonna affect the climate. As we're all seeing, I live in California, we're seeing the effects of this drought. It's horrifying. We haven't had water in years. And um, so it's a big issue, but you can, you know, if people are scared about their health, which sometimes some people come to you specifically for that, <laughs> not always, um, that's, a, that's a good way to tell how much they're consuming and maybe make them think twice. And it give, makes my parents give up fish once in a while. <laughs> yeah, when I, when I first started reading the literature, the literature is very strong about meats, but it's not that strong against fish. And as Pam has said before, you look at some of the, like the blue zones that I talked about earlier, just about all of them eat fish. Uh, not all of them, but a lot of them eat fish. It, the Adventist Health Study that you guys know that I think is like the greatest study ever, the pescatarians actually did better than the vegans and vegetarians when it came to cancer. 
and they did just as well or if not better in some of the other studies when it came to heart, to heart issues. But a lot of these places are sourcing their fish a lot better. Um, you know, in the, in, when I'm sitting down with a patient, I can't bring my ethics and the environment into the room. I don't know, we could have that argument. That's a whole other argument. I feel like I need to speak one-on-one -on -one with that patient about what's best for their health. In that situation, I tell them, look, you know, the data on fish is that it's healthy for you two to three times a week. More than that, there tends to be a problem. Personally, when I learned about stuff and I looked at the pescatarian data, it looked so good, I started eating fish a lot. I went and got my mercury level checked and it was 20. And I said to the doctor, what's it supposed to be? Zero. And I was like, it's 20 at zero. Now it's zero. And what is that? We don't exactly know what the effect of that mercury is, but it's substantial. And the other thing that happens with fish is you say fish is good. So people go and buy tilapia that we know is laden with dioxins and PCBs and stuff like that. So my general recommendation for my patients is if you could get, you don't need it. You could be very healthy without it. If you're going to eat it, just eat it twice a week. Look for smaller fish, sustained fish. I hate saying wild caught because wild caught can be really dangerous to the environment too with the long strings of wild caught where they get by catch. Um, but anyway, the, the data, if you're going to go by science, by science, a pescatarian diet does seem to be healthy. Though I do think the data, there's problems with the data that, that may be um, biasing it towards being healthy, and that I still think a vegan diet's healthier. I'm going to talk about the omega 3s tomorrow, and that might be the one reason why it seems to be healthier in some of these studies. Um, but there's ways to get it directly instead of indirectly and, and using the middle fish. I do think it's the omega 3. I mean, in the end, I do think it's the omega 3. It, 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 but, you know, you'll talk about that. When we talk about science, science generally looks at mainstream. Uh, methodologies and diet programs. Uh, they haven't done long-term studies on vegan diets yet. And so I've written a three-volume series for the scientific community doing that, basically looking at about 75 years uh, of data that pretty much put together the vegan diet and superseded all of these mainstream studies. And so you may be interested in reading them. That's Food is Medicine long-term studies on vegans, actually. They've done quite a few. Um, there's the uh, Heidelberg German study. There's the Epic Oxford study. There's the Adventist Health study. Um, but there's lots of problems with them. So for instance, like in the Oxford vegan study, the vegans there were ethical vegans. If you look at their fiber intake, it was about 20 grams of fiber. So all of us up on this stage would never tell anybody to eat 20. I don't know how you could get just 20 grams of fiber on a vegan diet. You gotta be eating Oreos all day. So these are, <laughs> these, are, these are not necessarily healthy vegans, okay? And when they looked at these vegans, their calcium intake was less than 500 milligrams. It's so easy to get calcium on a vegan diet. And they're not taking B12 supplementation and they're not eating organic. Uh, so, so there are long-term studies on vegans, but I don't think they're good long-term studies on the kind of vegans that we're talking about. I mean, like the kind of people that go to Hippocrates and follow the diet that you would give them there is not the kind of vegans that are being studied, and that tends to make veganism look worse. The, the funny thing about the Oxford study is they weren't taking B12. They had low B12, which rises homocysteine level, which should give you heart disease. So did the vegans have heart disease? No, they had less heart disease than the meat eaters. And the funny thing is, in that study, the vegans were terribly uh, eating a terrible diet. The meat eaters were the healthiest meat eating people you've ever seen. They only ate meat like once a week or twice a week and they were eating lots of fruits and vegetables. So they biased it so that the meat eaters would do better. They biased it so the vegans would do terribly. The vegans still beat the meat eaters. <laughs>